All right, I'd like to welcome everyone to my presentation today. And at first, I'd like to introduce you to my sister-in-law, Natalie Kaiser. Natalie is a mother uh, of three, well, four now. In this picture, there's obviously only three, but they just had a girl recently named Brooke. So it goes, the oldest is James, who's in the middle here, and then there's Mikey and Billy and Brooke. So she's just got a really nice family, and I wanted to introduce to you uh, her oldest, whose name is James, um, and the reason why, James, by looking at him, you would never guess, but James has actually been diagnosed with autism. So has anyone in this room know anyone or had any interaction with somebody with autism? You could raise your hand if you do great. So most of the people in the room have interacted with somebody who has autism. Um, autism is interesting because you can't really tell generally by just their makeup, but they act differently. So maybe somebody that's 14 acts like a six-year-old, um, and it makes it difficult when you go to a store or something like that because nobody can tell. It's very easy to quickly judge and can reflect poorly on a parent. Well, one day Natalie was taking all of her kids to the library and they get to the library. James is actually having a relatively good day um, this day and a gentleman comes up to Natalie and he thinks it's important to let her know that she needs to learn how to use birth control. So I don't know how many in this room think that that's an appropriate thing to say. Probably no one. It's, it's just not appropriate to say something like that. My question, though, goes even further. Is it right to just think it? What if he didn't say it? What if he just thought it? Is it okay then? So as you think about that, I don't want you to answer it out loud, but as you think about it, I want to turn to a talk by Jeffrey R. Holland uh, that he gave in 2000 at BYU titled Assume the Best. Um, he says, think the best of each other, especially of those you say you love. Assume the good and doubt the bad. So for him, he actually declares that you should always try and assume the best in those you love. And sometimes this can be difficult, um, especially if you think you know the situation very well. You think you know that person and chances are you're right. It's easy to assume the bad. So that's the question I want to pose to you. What if chances are you're right? Assume the best and doubt the bad, that's great and all in principle, but what if chances are, 99%, you're pretty sure that you are correct in your judgment, which is a harsh judgment. Um, when I was working at Southwest Airlines as an intern, I, I don't know whoever has served in, as interns yet, but it's a lot of pressure because you always want to do your very best and you're constantly seen and, and you want to show that you should be hired for this job. Well, I was given an almost insurmountable task for my boss to crunch hundreds of numbers via pen and paper and then check it through Excel. So I spent hours, I mean hours upon hours, crunching numbers. And every single time I did it, Excel was always different. So I'd spend another hour and crunch them all out and do it in Excel and it was different. And it drove me nuts. And finally I go up to my boss, Seth. I'm like, Seth, I don't know what to tell you. I've done this so many times and I've spent hours on it, but I can't seem to get the same thing Excel says. Now, if, I were to, if you were to step out of this situation, and let's say you're taking a quiz, and this was, the, this was the question, they gave you that background, now they say, choose between A and B. Who do you think is right? Do you think Excel is correct, or do you think I am right with my little pad and paper using a Google calculator? Who in this room would choose A? I would be right there with you. Who would choose B? You're better than I am. That's awesome. You don't even need to talk. Um, well, that's exactly what happened the second people. Seth, the very first thing he said to me was, the computer's probably wrong. Man, as an intern working at a huge corporation for your boss to tell you that, it felt incredible. I felt like I got the people that, um, in this particular case, matter most. They're in my quarter. Even when chances are I'm wrong, they still assume the best and doubt the bad in me. And it felt so good to know that. I felt basically like this guy, a little less handsome, and with my top button, buttoned. But that's how I felt. I felt like I got people supporting me, people backing me up. And that's what it's all about. Even if the odds are, you're probably right, what does it hurt to, to reach out a hand and to, and to assume the best in somebody? Then the next uh, experience I want to give was actually given by uh, Sister Christofferson. So I don't know if anybody got to go to Elder and Sister Christofferson's talk when they came, but when they came here, she gave an experience of when she was in South America. Has anyone here been to South America? A lot of times if somebody served a mission, three out of four times that it was in South America. So that's why I ask. I served in South America. 
In the streets there, though, a lot of times there are street vendors who kind of almost rush the car when you get to a stoplight, and they sell candy, and they try to wash your windows, and all this stuff. Well, when they were in South America, um, they, st they came to a stoplight, and this young lady started coming out trying to sell things, and she was wearing super tight pants, a really low collar neckline on her shirt, uh, with one side hanging off her shoulder with a kind of strap showing, and you know, just not really what you'd find when you go to sacrament meeting or something like that. So the first thing Sister Christofferson thinks is, oh man, that poor lady, if only she knew about modesty, if only she knew how to dress and, and how to, you know, kind of conserve her body. And as soon as she started thinking thoughts like that, she was reprimanded. She had a, 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 a more divine, heavenly, bigger than herself thought that rushed into her mind that said, you have no idea. If you were to sit with that girl for five minutes and just talk and listen, it would change your life forever. I love that daughter of mine. And it just, it changed her perspective. Like even when um, you see somebody and visually everything makes sense, that person just living and not in a correct way, she's, she was still wrong, according to that divine inspiration. And she changed her outlook on people. Now the point of this message, the point that I'm trying to get to with assuming the good and out of the bad, is I would like to see more of this, basically. How often do we go by people and we don't know their situation, we don't know their circumstance, but we're pretty sure we do, and we can easily breeze by them. This particular photo went very famous of a man just taking off his shoes and giving it to a girl that was obviously very dirty and could be seen as somebody that might drink away her finances or whatever, but he gave the clothes off his back or the shoes off his feet for that girl. He assumed the best that she would um, take care of those shoes and she'd do something better in the future. Or this young lady who's giving money to a young girl, a lot of times we don't want to do that because we're like, well, they're probably just going to spend it on drugs or alcohol or something like that. But assume the best in the people. That's my final end all message. Is I'd like to invite everyone in this room to take the opportunity when you have it to assume the best. It's not, there's, no, there's no medication that you could take that just helps you do that and change overnight. It's a process. It's a time after time, trying after trying, and eventually we continue to get better. So I'd like to extend that information or that invitation to everybody. Assume the best and doubt the bad. Thank you very much.